So if you're a solo filmmaker or a content creator or anything like that, the chances are that you do pretty much everything by yourself. So the filming, the lighting, the editing, it's all you. And naturally that means that you're gonna need quite a lot of equipment to be able to do all of that. So I thought I'd go through everything that I own as a freelance filmmaker and hopefully that will help you get an idea of what kind of things that you need to create a certain level of work. Now this is in no way any kind of flex, it's taken years of quite a lot of hard work to be able to afford all of this stuff. I've actually bought quite a lot of it secondhand as well and I'll talk a bit about that later. Right, let's get into it. So my camera is a Sony A7S III. I have to be honest, I probably would have actually preferred an FX3, but I bought this camera two years ago from a production company that bought it and never actually needed it. So I got it at a really good price and uh, it's been quite a beast to be honest. It's definitely a good workhorse and yeah, I'm really happy with the image. Eventually I'll like to go up to like a more cinema camera kind of thing, but for what I do at the minute, it's pretty much perfect. And then I've got my A7 III, which doesn't get used an awful lot, but it has come in handy as like a B cam or photography camera a few times. And yeah, considering you don't get too much of these resale, I just kind of thought it was a good idea to keep it. It's come in handy in emergencies when I've needed two cameras or a backup camera. So yeah, I think it's still good to have the image. I'm not like too crazy about the image that comes out of it video wise, but I think if you've got the lighting right and things like that, you can still make it look quite good. So yeah, still holding on to it for the moment. So in terms of lenses, I mostly use the 24 to 70 2.8 G Master lens. Just love the image. I think it's such a good focal length for kind of sorts me out for pretty much everything that I shoot. Then on top of that, I've got the 24 to 105 that I pretty much use for everything before I got that G Master lens. It's a really good all rounder. I would definitely recommend it. This kind of lives on my B camera now. I don't usually need to use it as I've got the 24 to 70, but yeah, still a really good lens and uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep it for the foreseeable. Then I've also got an 85mm 1.8, which is a really good lens, like 85mm always looks good, right? So being a 1.8, I think doubling up on like an interview, if you've got like a 35mm paired with like an 85, it's gonna look really cool. So it's not worth too much these days, this lens. So I just thought I'd keep hold of it and uh, yeah, sometimes comes in handy. And whilst we're talking about lenses, I've got this pack of diopters, which I got from Amazon, super cheap. If I can find the link, I'll put it in the description, but yeah, I've used these on a few uh, videos recently to get those super crazy macro shots and, and the quality is really good. So if those shots are something that you're trying to achieve, then yeah, I'd say these are quite a good option. In terms of filtration, I'm still using one eighth of Tiffin Black Pro Mist just to get that sort of softer, bloomy look. I think in the future I'll try something else, but yeah, for the time being, it's been really good. And then in terms of ND, I've got a variable one from Freewell, two to five stops does what I need it to do. It's got a tiny color shift, which I have to sort out in post, but it's kind of making up for that and the fact that it's got a really cool magnetic uh, lens cap. So yeah, does the job for me. In terms of cages, I use small rig for everything. I've got a top handle, side handle, and uh, yeah, the camera cage itself. And then in terms of rigging out the camera a bit more, I do have these set of rails with a plate here and got a V-lock on the back, so if it's gonna be a long day or a long shoot, then yeah, I might opt to put the camera on here. And then in terms of monitor, I've got this Atomos Shinobi five inch monitor. It's pretty good. It's super lightweight, really easy to use. I'm not fully convinced by the colors. I think I've used small HD stuff in the past and I think the image is unreal. And I think then, yeah, you come down to use like a two, 300 pound monitor and it's never quite the same. So I do use this sometimes, but I think in the future, I'll probably save up and maybe get a better one. But um, yeah, for what it does for the price, it's pretty good. In terms of gimbals, I'm still rocking the original DJI uh, Ronin S. It is pretty beaten up at this point, but personally, I don't use gimbals enough in my work to warrant going out and buying a brand new one. So. Yeah, it works fine. It takes a little while to get the balance right, but yeah, it's uh, fine for what I need it for. So my main microphone is the Rode VideoMic NTG, and this for me actually doubles up as what I would use for things like this, like talking headshots. It's rigged above me at the moment. And because of that, I use it for things like interviews. Uh, I just put an extra long cable on and yeah, run it straight into my camera. And that's how I get my interview audio most of the time. But on top of that, it doubles up as my shotgun mic. So yeah, 
for pretty much all the time this microphone just lives on top of my camera. I've also got an external recorder which is this Zoom H4n Pro. For me this is quite good for when you're out and about trying to get like footsteps and breathing and birds and all those little sounds that can help you in terms of your sound design. This is probably what I use that for the most. You can obviously record into it for things like interviews and stuff like that but yeah, for me, it just comes on shoots and I grab little sounds here and there and just kind of helps me when it comes to sound design. In terms of a lav mic, I've got the Rode Filmmaker kit, which is very old at this point. I've had this for a long, long time, but sound quality, still really happy with it. It's pretty good. It's a little bulky, which is a bit annoying, but running off of AA batteries, I think personally is quite nice. I find it quite reliable. So um, yeah, it's still getting used and I'm sure I will upgrade eventually, but at the moment, I'm quite happy with it. So getting into lighting, I thought I'd bring up the one that is lighting me at this very moment. It is the Falconize RX18 TD. Bit of a mouthful that, but yeah, it's a wicked light, super cheap. It costs like 250 pounds, doesn't really weigh anything. Takes a little time to sort of get it out of its box and get it all together. But, but yeah, really good light. You can put it in quite interesting places because it doesn't really weigh anything. Yeah, just rig it above you, use it as a key light, so many different options. And uh, yeah, I would say if you need something to travel with as well, it fits in a suitcase. So uh, yeah, I would say that was a quite good investment. And then pretty much my main light is the Aperture 120D, which getting old now, there are probably better things on the market, but again, another really good eBay purchase. They chucked in the Light Dome 2 attachment as well, which I think they're like 150 pounds or something anyway. So yeah, got it all really cheap. It's been great for like interviews and talking head stuff. I think it is a little lacking in terms of power for like a big key light. Um, in the future, I'll probably upgrade to like a 300D or a 300X, but it's been really good so far. It's kind of kept me going for the last year or two. And yeah, like for the money, you just can't complain really. And then my last light is a little aperture MC, another good find on eBay pretty handy for like a little hair light or just put it against a wall or something to make something interesting in the background. It's so small, you just chuck it in your bag and if it comes in handy, then great. In terms of grip equipment, I've currently got two C stands, some boom arms, knuckles, clamps. All these things are kind of boring and they do cost quite a lot of money, but you absolutely need them on shoots. I've come up short a few times, I could probably do with a couple more C stands. So. Yeah, it's all kind of boring stuff, but is really useful and pretty essential if you're gonna be a freelancer. Just a quick word on fabrics as well, like got some little clamps here from Amazon. But yeah, you can use things like diffusion sheets to put in front of your lighting, make it even softer. Got some negative film material, which can also double up as a bounce. It's white on one side and black on the other. That is actually um, blackout blind material. I got it from a fabric shop close to where I live. I think I've got two meters by two meters and it's like, I think it costs me like 10 pounds or something like that. So yeah, I think having fabrics is just a really good idea. Got some unbleached muslin as well. You can put that in front of windows or your lights to create some sort of warmth in your image. But yeah, it's just super cheap stuff to, to have and usually comes in handy. So um, yeah, I would definitely suggest get yourself a little box of fabric. In terms of tripods, the one that I'm using for the most part is technically a travel tripod, but it weighs enough that I'm quite comfortable with my camera being on it. I do so much sort of run and gun style stuff that I'm always picking up and carrying it around and those really chunky ones. I think when I'm working purely by myself would be quite hard work to take around with me. So yeah, I've opted for the small one and it's perfectly fine for what I need. I've also got like a super lightweight travel one, which is good for taking on a holiday or just like putting a B cam on in the corner somewhere, but I don't really trust it too much. And uh, I've had a camera fall off it in the past. So uh, I try not to use that one too much. On top of all that, I've also got some more like retro things that I sometimes try and fit into my work if it feels right. One of them is this old Sony tape recorder. You just talk into it, it's got quite a cool uh, sound to it. So yeah, if it suits the project, then yeah, I could record some audio into it and use that in a video. I think it's quite cool. Then I've got my old film camera, which obviously I love to bits. Not really a work thing as such, it's more for me and for using for a hobby, but 
yeah, never know when a client might want some film photography or anything like that. So yeah, could come in handy for work in the future. And then in a recent video, I did show off the recent Sony Handycam, which I think the footage could come in handy for a client project. It's definitely got quite a cool like 90s feel to it. So yeah, if the project suits it, then why not? Then in terms of camera bags, this is from Langley. They're an American brand, so had to pay a little bit extra to get imported, but well worth it. It's waterproof. I think it looks pretty cool as well. Um, really good compartments on it and uh, yeah, really hard wearing and uh, comes with me on every single shoot. When it comes to editing, I'm doing all of that on my MacBook Pro. It's an M1 Max, 32 gig of RAM, I think. And uh, yeah, it's brilliant. It's super fast. It's more than good enough for what I need. I used to have a 2017 MacBook Pro, which was one of the Intel ones. It just stopped being able to keep up with what I was doing. I've still got it. I think it's quite good to like take on shoots and stuff. You can back things up on it and you don't have to worry about having like your main laptop on set. So um, yeah, it's just a really good laptop to have. And yeah, like I said, the main one is more than good enough for what I need. I know people that work off of like MacBook Airs, even with like 4K footage and stuff. So yeah, I think any of the newer MacBooks are gonna be brilliant for video editing. So uh, yeah, really happy with that. And I'm glad because uh, it cost me quite a lot of money. <laughs> In terms of headphones, I'm still using these Sony noise cancelling wireless headphones. Um, I think back in the day they were like 300 pounds, so they were pretty good ones. Don't know what they are now. If I find the model, I'll bring it up on screen for you, but use these in the gym, use them for editing. Again, like probably four or five years old now, but more than good enough for what you need. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with these. Then in terms of data storage, for me, Lacey four terabyte hard drives is what I use for like an archive of stuff. I've got one for personal things and one for freelance and business stuff. And then pretty much the same kind of thing when it comes to what I edit from. I've got SanDisk Extreme Pro SSDs. And again, one for my personal work and one for my business work. Just a quick one that I can't really show physically and that is insurance for me. Never broke anything for years and years and years. And then when I did, I was really, really glad that I had insurance. Didn't really cost a lot in terms of the excess. Then when it comes to the cost of the actual insurance, I think for me, 100 pounds for a year or something like that. And that covers every bit of equipment I've got. I think, yeah, if you're someone who's acquired quite a lot of equipment and it's not under any warranty, like me, a lot of this stuff is second hand. So uh, yeah, protect it. I think it's a good idea. So that is essentially everything that I've got. I hope that it's kind of shown you that you don't need all the best equipment and the newest equipment to get started and to create work that you're happy with. Like I said, so much of what I have was not bought new and is now considered quite old. But I think as long as you're happy with the image that you're getting and Clients aren't ever gonna know like how old your equipment is or how much you paid for it and things like that. So yeah, as long as it works for you and you're happy, then that's all that matters. If you have any questions about anything that I showed in this video, then chuck it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.